Hey there, it's Ben Housel here. So in this second video of this two video series, we're having a look at how we create this slide-in title. In the first video, we had a look at how we create it purely in Final Cut Pro 10. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at how we create it in Apple Motion. So basically, we're gonna run through how we create a plugin with type and animation in Apple Motion. If you're brand new to Apple Motion, this is a great way to hone your Apple Motion skills. Um, it's a really simple tutorial to kind of run through. If you don't have Apple Motion, then you can run through the example in Final Cut Pro 10, the previous video, or you can download the simple plugin that I've created in this tutorial by following the link below. If you're interested in more advanced plugins, then I definitely recommend having a look at FX Factory who are kindly sponsoring this video. Uh, we're not gonna be using any external plugins for this video, just purely the Apple Motion plugin that we're gonna build, uh, but definitely go check out FX Factory. But without further ado, let's dive into Apple Motion and Final Cut Pro 10 and look at how we create this type animation plugin. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up Apple Motion. So we'll jump into the bottom of my dock here and we're gonna jump into Apple Motion. And when you open Apple Motion, it's basically gonna prompt you to ask you what type of project you wanna create. So we want to create this Final Cut Pro title. And I'm normally editing in 29.97 frames per second. And it's normally a good idea to create your plugins in the same frame rate that you're working in. So if you're editing at 60 frames per second, then create it like that. If you're working in different frame rates, such as 24 frames per second, then create your plugins in that frame rate. We're gonna be working in broadcast HD, and we're gonna make the duration of this plugin 10 seconds long. So I'm just gonna type in 10 period here. Now we're gonna have an animated intro and an animated outro for this particular title, and that will be locked. So if we need to keep this on screen for a longer period of time, we can do that, but we'll have those kind of animations at the beginning and end. So we'll open this up. And what we'll see here in Apple Motion is our title background. So that's our video in the background. Essentially what will happen is any changes we make to this title background layer will happen to the video that's below that title. Uh, then we have the type text here option. And basically this is what we're gonna set up as our title um, in Apple Motion. And the only other element that we need to add here is our graphic layer. So I'm gonna come up to my tools in the middle here and we're gonna grab the rectangle tool. So if you don't see the rectangle tool there, then just click on the arrow and grab the rectangle tool. And basically I'm gonna zoom out of here just a little bit so I can see the edges and I'm just gonna drag out a rectangle on the left there. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than my canvas, um, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna grab the selection tool. So now you can see I've got this rectangle that I can move around and I can resize it on the edge here, but I'm just gonna let it overhang the edge of my video here and kind of get it into around about the position that I want it. Now, obviously I don't want a white rectangle here. I want it to be a color and I also want it to be below my type. So I'm just gonna look at my layers down here in my timeline and drag that layer below my text layer. And then up in the inspector, I can modify the fill properties for my I can modify the fill properties for my rectangle. So you can see here we've got some different fill modes. We've got color, we've got gradient. Uh, we're gonna put a gradient in this particular example. And we've got some gradient options here as well. Some kind of pre-built gradients that we can use. And if we open up the gradient here, you can see we've got some kind of different options uh, for that particular gradient. So we're actually gonna keep the gradient colors kind of nice and, and close. So if I click here, on any one of these gradients, um, I can basically modify them. And we're gonna start from this Atlantic blue. So basically it's going from blue to blue across here. And I am going to change this to a radial gradient as well. And we'll change the center point of that in a second. But basically here, I'm gonna choose a slightly darker blue. And then here, I'm gonna choose something that's kind of close, but has a little bit of color in it. So We'll just pick out kind of nice light blue there. So once that's set up, we can change the, the kind of way this gradient flows. Okay, we want a nice smooth gradient. And then also the kind of start and end point of the gradient as well. So you can see I can change where this gradient sits within that shape. So actually I'm gonna move this around a little bit so we get a much more subtle gradient. And actually, if we come to our tools here, we can come to the adjust item tool, and you can see here we can modify the angle of our gradient, we can change the size of it, and we can kind of get it to sit really nicely in this square. So, so that's kind of what we're looking for here. We've got a nice kind of subtle gradient. The text is gonna look really uh, good over the top of that. We've also got some options for outline here as well. Uh, we'll leave the outline off, 
Uh, and then we've also got some options for the kind of geometry and that type of thing. But actually, uh, we'll just jump back to the transform tool and we'll leave this as is. So we're going to come to the, the type options here now. So I'm going to double click into the type options. And this is one of the nice things about working in motion as compared to working in Final Cut Pro, which is that we can actually change the text wrap. So we can actually put our type in here into a, a frame rather than uh, just a line that keeps moving across the screen. So I'm going to type in my text here. And we'll also come into Lorem Ipsum. We're just going to grab a paragraph of type here. So I'm just going to break to the next line. And I'm going to use Shift, Command, and Alt, and V to paste that in. And that's going to keep the same style of the text. And you can see it's kind of scrolling here. We've got it way too big. So we're going to select all this type all the way down. And we'll just drop the size of it a little bit. And I'm going to make it left justified. I've got one strange sentence there um, in this Latin text. We're just going to break that up to kind of fix it. And then we'll select all this. And we're going to add a bit more line spacing here. Now we can publish all these different options to Final Cut Pro, but also you can edit um, some of these options in Final Cut Pro by default. So I'm just going to select my text here. We're going to make this bold and we'll make this body text regular. So these very long Latin words are kind of changing the flow of the type a little bit. So I'm just breaking these up so that we get a bit of a nicer flow of our default type in there. So we'll come back to the selection tool. And now you can see we can move this around. Our anchor point is down here for this type. And that doesn't matter too much because we're not rotating this or anything like that. So basically, we have the, the kind of basic layout of our title here. And you can see it's running on our timeline for 10 seconds. And we'll just actually add in an extra line break here and then come back to the selection tool. And that's looking pretty good. So our animation here is going to happen in a short period of time. So basically, I press play. By this point in time, my animation is over. So I'm going to animate the rectangle first of all. So if I highlight my rectangle, and actually, before I do this, I want to add a, a marker in here. So I'm going to do Shift and M which is going to add a marker for my entire project. And what I want to do with this marker is right click on it, come to edit marker, and then we're going to change this marker to an optional build in. And then we'll set all this up. So basically, around about here, my rectangle animation is going to finish just before that optional build in. So I'm going to highlight that, come to my properties, and we're going to change the position. So it's Got a keyframe on there up at the top left and then we'll come back to the beginning and we'll drag this off so as soon as we add one keyframe when we move to a different spot in our timeline it's basically going to add the next keyframe now one critical thing that i forgot to do here is to save the work i'm doing so at this point we'll go to file save we're making a title so we're going to drop this into my titles and we'll call this slide in title, publish that. So now right from the get go, this is published to Final Cut Pro 10. And we'll just do the first little bit of type animation before we actually have a look at that in Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to play this through. Okay, that's pretty slow. Let's tighten this up a little bit. So I'm going to speed this up. Okay, that's nice. So basically, this is playing through. And just after that, has finished, I want my text to lock into place. So I'm going to select my type layer. I'm already in the properties up here at the top left. I'm going to make a keyframe there. I'll come back. And I'm kind of going to get my type to catch up a little bit with my rectangle. So I'm going to come to just after the rectangle has started to animate on. And I'm going to pull this title all the way off. So we can see now this is going to kind of animate on. So and that's looking pretty nice. And we might just speed this up just a teeny tiny bit. So I made it start a little later and finish a little sooner. So that's looking pretty good. One thing you want to make sure is when you're making modifications to any keyframes that you're or positions that you're working on, that you use the keyframe navigation buttons up here. We don't want to accidentally add extra keyframes where we don't want them. So you can see 
if I want to change the second keyframe for the type, I want to make sure that I navigate to it. And I'm just going to drag this a little bit over to the left here, nudge that position a little bit. So we'll come to the end here. So our animation is going to finish somewhere around about here. And our animation off is going to start around about this point. So this is where I want to also do Shift and M, right click, edit the marker, and then we're going to change this to an optional build out and then click OK. So basically you can see this is the area in the middle here that's going to hold in place. So I'm going to come to around about here. I'm going to add a keyframe for my type layer. We have that selected. And then I'm going to come ahead in time and we'll drag this off again to the left. And then I'll do the same for my rectangle. So I'm going to get this to animate off after my type has started moving. So I'm going to add a keyframe for the rectangle just after the, the type has started animating. We'll move across the right and then we will drag this all the way off. So we can see now this is the beginning, come to the end. So we get a nice little follow of the blue background after the text has already started animating off. So the next thing I want to do here is actually get this background to move. So with my title background, I'm going to have it move across as this nudges into place. So from somewhere around about here, maybe halfway between here, we're going to add a keyframe for the position of that background. We'll come ahead in time to just after the text locks in place. And I'm going to move this across to the right. Now, obviously, this won't work with all videos because videos are framed differently. But for this example, um, it will. So kind of a central person on camera. So basically now we've got that little push of that video. And obviously, we can modify the speed of it by adjusting the keyframes here. So let's come to the end. So once that starts to animate off, we're going to add another keyframe for the position of our background. And then before our box has animated off, we want this back at the center. So I'm just going to drag this to the left, and I should get it snapping to the middle there. But I just want to check my position up here that it's zero and zero. So now at the end, it's going to slide off, and that video is going to pop back into place. So you can see the beginning, and then the end. So that's nice. So basically, we want to publish one thing here that's really the color of this shape on the left here. So basically I'm going to highlight my rectangle. I'm going to come into my shape and into the style. And I've got these two options for the, the gradient. So for my gradient here, if I highlight one of these points, I can click here and I can publish one side of that gradient. So basically that means that color is going to be visible in Final Cut Pro 10. And I'll do the same for the other half of the gradient. Now we can change the text color in Final Cut Pro 10 in the normal text tool. So we don't need to publish anything extra there for this example. So I'm going to save that. We'll come back into Final Cut Pro 10. And in my titles here, we have the slide in title. We can drag that onto my video and play that through. And you can see right from the get-go, we have a much easier way of adding that graphic. And it will animate off. So obviously, we can play around with this. I think I've pushed myself across to the right a little too much. Now, one thing I can do is if I come back to motion, I can highlight my background here. Now, I've got to be careful with this because my background is keyframed here. So I'm going to come to the properties for my title background and we're going to nudge this back to the left just a little bit so minus 3 16 and 1 that should be a zero and then so i don't get drift from this keyframe to the next keyframe i want to make sure i come to the next keyframe and type in 3 16 and 0 there as well so that this central area still holds so if we save this now, we can come back into Final Cut Pro. We can delete the title from the timeline. And then we can drag this new title onto our timeline here and play that through. 
and you can see that's framed quite nicely. So if I highlight this and come up to my published parameters, you can see here I've got my options for turning on and off the build in and build out. And then I've also got options for my color. So I can select a different color for my gradient. Okay. And we can publish other parameters as well. But we'll leave this at this point. We're just going to add the drop shadow um, on here. So if we come to motion, I'm going to highlight my rectangle. And you can see the option here for my rectangles drop shadow is right there. So I can add that on. I can show that information. And then for the rectangle, we can increase the blur. And just see it popping out there. It's a little bit subtle. Uh, I can change the, the distance and increase the blur a bit more. So it's nice and visible. And then I could also publish the opacity, which means I can turn that drop shadow on and off or kind of modify it a little bit. So we'll save this and come back to Final Cut Pro, delete the existing title from the timeline, drop our slightly modified one on. And you can see now we have that drop shadow there. And we also, if we highlight this, have the opacity of the drop shadow there as well if we want to accentuate that a little bit more. So play this through. And before we wrap up here, one last thing to show you, of course, is how to edit our type. So we've created our text plugin for Final Cut Pro 10 with the animation. We know we can modify the color. And then if we highlight our slide in title here, we're gonna come up to our inspector, make sure we have the selection tool selected. And now we can move in here and edit our type. So basically we can highlight the type here, we can even nudge it around a little bit if it's not quite in the right position as we resize things. Uh, and that will kind of flow with the animation as well. But we can select areas of our type up here, pick our 2D style so we can modify different lines of our title independently. We can pick any style that we want. And obviously now because we've designed it in Apple Motion, um, it's gonna wrap to this text frame that we've created in there as well. So that's really handy. So basically we can come in here, we can use all of the type editing tools in Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm gonna double click up here and just hide my effects. And basically we can see in here, we've got all the kind of same type editing tools that we would have for a normal title generator in Final Cut Pro 10. So we can modify the line spacing. Obviously we can edit and modify the type and change the scale, modify our alignment here as well depending on what we're looking for, and then modify things like the tracking as well. And then if we scroll down, we obviously have all the other options for things like drop shadow, outline, um, things like modifying the, the color as well. So we can modify the color of our gradient and then also modify the color of our type here as well. Then we can play this through one last time. We have the type animating, the video in the background animating, and then we've also modified our title with the normal type tools in Final Cut Pro 10. So you can see the editability of these plugins that we create in Apple Motion is really awesome. So there you have it. We have built a kind of very simple slide in title for Final Cut Pro 10 in a couple of different ways in these two tutorials. One purely in Final Cut Pro 10 and one in Apple Motion. And obviously we can really do a lot of different things with Apple Motion as well, um, with these titles. And we can also add things like textures and stuff like that. We just use a simple gradient here, but we could also bring in graphic content into Apple Motion. So if you're working with photography or with stills from your video, you can use that as parts of your design in Apple Motion as well. So I hope this has been useful. Um, if you have any questions about this or other tutorials, in Final Cut Pro 10, then please leave a question below. And a big thank you to FX Factory for sponsoring this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next tutorial.